name is Rachel Grappas. This is Colleen Conway on the CA Markup. And we've been invited here to present our results for Mark during evaluation of the XYZ pension scheme. We hope you view the level of asset funding in relation to the value of the scheme itself and hence observe the resulting deficit. We hope you will make an informed decision regarding the appropriate future contribution policy scheme. So, before running the Superbell software, we first calculated the financial and demographic assumptions that we will be including in our calculation. In this sensitivity analysis, which features later on in this presentation, we will discuss the impact of the changes in assumptions to our liabilities. To begin with, we analyzed the present condition of the financial market, which we all know has been through some turbulent times recently. Due to the drop in the value of shares in the FS, E100 companies such as ours will struggle greatly over the coming years to cover the funds required for the pension schemes. This is evident because companies such as BP and Barclays have taken action to secure their funds by moving from a defined ben benefit scheme to a defined contribution scheme. The reason behind the move is that in a defined contribution scheme, the employee has to contrib contribute more to the scheme rather than the employer. Therefore, this reduces the company costs. Due to the severe underfunding in the majority of schemes today, we as actuaries will be exhibiting high levels of prudency when constructing our assumptions. First of all, we have used an accrual rate of 160. What, what this means is that for every year a member is entitled to a pension, they will receive 160 of their total dollar. This rate is widely accepted and appropriate for companies such as ours. Next, we calculate the interest rate based on the 30-year average of the FTSE all share. We then added a premium and produced a figure of 6.3% for pre-retirement interest rate and 58 for post-retirement interest rate. When calculating our inflation rates, we use the same method as before, taking our average of 30 years and arriving at a rate of 35 and following this, we set the salary growth at 4.5%. With regard to the proportion of the population margin, we used a figure of 90%. We are aware that this seems high when you consider the increase in divorce rate in our society today. However, we are, as actuaries are experienced pregnant. Also, we assumed wives who are three years younger than husbands and assumed a spouse's death in their retirement to be 50%. When calculating mortality rates, we use the PMA92, PFA92 based mortality rates as they are the most recent and reliable two tables available to us. To make our results more relevant to our XYZ pension scheme, we decided to give non pensioners a rate of minus 4 and pensioners a rate of minus 1. The pensioners' rate is the result of the group not benefit from the medical advances due to their age. With benefit to the pension increase, all workers in the companies were assigned to a category based on their position in the company. Category 1 being assigned to a category based is consisting of staff such as cleaners and security. The job ranking increases in line with the categories, with category 5 containing the senior management and the executive. As you can see from the tables, the lower categories receive no increase in the pension. Category 2 increased based on the RPI and the remaining sectors receive 4% increase. Our other assumptions include salaries were averaged over the last three years before retirement, having a retirement age of 65 for both male and female. There is no existence of early retirement in our pension exchange. Revaluation in deferment is 3.5%. No cash communication, death in service benefit and death in deferment benefit is ensured. After running Super Bowl, here are preliminary results. This shows a breakdown of the funding for each of the three categories, active, deferred and pensioners. We are now going to summarise the data that we have, we have in relation to our XYZ scheme. Here is how the scheme is divided in relation to gender of the members and types of, types of pensions. The scheme containing 968 members was split into three categories. Actives, who are those co uh, currently employed by the company. Deferred, who are those who are no longer <coughs> employed by the company but have not yet reached the age of retirement. And pensioners. As you can see from the chart, the majority of 
the scheme is made up of, of made up of the players. The categories shown represent the rate at which their pensions increase. We are now going to look at liabilities. The funding level is now is currently 58.5 percent, which is a, which is alarmingly low for a pension scheme. We are confident in these figures because, as well as running our scheme data in, into the Superval software, we also perform manual checks using Excel to back up our results and check for any computing errors. We intend to bring our funding level back up to 100 percent by the year 2020. This is ambitious. This is an ambitious aim, although we have uh, devised a plan that would result in reaching a goal, which we will now discuss. Our first plan is to investigate the investment portfolio, portfolio to see if uh, it, it can increase its returns. Next, calculate a framework for an employee pension scheme within the company. Thirdly, encourage the employer to con contribute further to the employee saving. Also, if we have sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, to contribute further to the employee saving. Also, we have, we having done extensive research, feel the company should switch from a defined benefit scheme to a defined contribution scheme. This will mean that the company is not liable for any de deficit. Finally, we feel that it would be beneficial to change the assumptions, which we will outline in greater, which we will in greater detail in the presentation. We believe that this change will be the most beneficial and will bring out the greatest improvements. Asset summary. We've, de we've decided that it is in the best interest to change the asset location rather than having all the assets tied up in equity, which although it can yield good dividends, it is extremely risky, especially given the current recession. We feel that the assets would be better allocated between various bonds. As we want to obtain substantial investment, we propose to, to invest 35% of our assets in bonds. At maturity, uh, the bond holder is legally required to, to receive a lump sum and a series of uh, interest payments. This is a more secure option. We so we decided to allocate 20% uh, of our assets into risk-free government bonds to provide secure returns. The, al the allocation of the majority of our assets into domestic and international equity ensures stable international relations. We also advise placing a proportion of our assets in a, into a hedge fund. A hedge fund is an aggressively managed portfolio, portfolio of investments that use uh, advanced investment strategies with uh, the goal of generating high returns. This protects investors from the unpredictable market, however it is not risk free and therefore we have, we have decided to allocate only a small percentage to hedge funds, hedge funds. We feel that it would be advisable to invest some of our assets in property as it is a, as it is a secure investment. We believe that a revised asset allocation with will, will yield effective returns and place the company in a better and more stable position. An interest rate is a discounting factor that reduces liabilities. We have we at XYZ have analyzed the effect of a change in interest rate on our liabilities as shown in the tables. Here the, in, the inverse relationship between uh, interest rates and liabilities can be observed as the interest rate increases the, li the liability value decreases. It is clear from the tables that the liabilities are extremely sensitive, uh, even to a small change in interest rate. If the interest rate increased by 0.5% to 6.8%, uh, our liabilities would be considerably higher than we previously planned. Similarly, we calculated the effect of a plus 0.5 change to our inflation on our liabilities. As you can see, if our inflation rate turned out to be again reduce our liabilities by 11 million to our XY pension scheme. If the interest rate turned out to be 0.5% higher than, the predicted, than predicted and the inflation rate 05 less than they expected, our funding deficit would be worth half of its original value. However, with our extensive research into our assumptions, we feel that it would be advisable to stick to our original assumption to ensure efficiency is maintained. Cost saving. Having outlined the effects of the changes, we are now going to discuss how they should be implemented in order to save the company money. The XYZ pension scheme should move to a career average revaluation scheme, which changes the salary over the last three years in order to determine pensions. A career average revalued earnings scheme is a type of defined benefit arrangement. It is set up by an employer to provide income and retirement for its employees. Although the employer is responsible for sponsoring the scheme, it is run by a board of trustees. You, you would be responsible for paying retirement and benefits. Members can take 
contribute to the scheme with the promise of a certain level of pension. The amount of pension payable is dependent upon the length of time served in the scheme, career average earnings, the scheme's accrual rate. The accrual rate is the proportion of salary that is received for each year of service. So if the scheme has an accrual rate of 60, the member will receive one sixtieth of their final pensionable salary for each year of service completed. We find that implementing this can make a savings one million three three hundred thousand six three hundred and sixty five thousand sixty five pounds for X Y Z pension scheme. We suggest changing the accrual rate from sixtieth to eightieth, which as you can see from the graph makes a saving of eight million eight hundred and fifty thousand four hundred pounds. We propose to change the national retirement age to 70 in line with the increasing expectancy of the population. This will make a significant saving of 8,349,238 on our scheme as shown on the graph. An additional cost savings will be introduced to introduce non percent increases on all future pension accruals. Although not favourable with policy members, it makes a cost saving of 52,131,040 which the total would leave us just one million short when covering liability. Even without changing the future pension accrual and increasing the rate to 12%, we we'll still save a total of 18,564,693 per annum, which will make it a lot easier for us to recover from our 58.5% funding level. To sum up, we have valued the XY pension scheme at £128 million, and at that point we have added at £75 million. This leaves an alarming deficit of 53 million, which only accounts for 58.5 of our scheme funding level. With the asset allocation that we have suggested and changes in assumptions of interest rates and inflation rates, we can see that these have a large impact on our liabilities. In addition to reducing our liabilities, we have suggested cost-saving methods such as